Calcutta, November 2000, and people are arriving to start a revolution. 20 years ago, in 1978, the World Health Organization meeting in Alma-Ata called for health for all by the year 2000. Two decades later, and the world is still waiting. Today, people are asking why health for all not only hasn't happened, but why more people's health is actually getting worse. In Alma-Ata, we came out with stars in our eyes. And then what happened? And why did it not happen? For the poor, you don't have to explain that you need a change. Everybody knows they need a change, they just don't know how. You don't have to teach them to say that you don't have something. They know they don't have it. Most of the world's people don't even know what to protest yet. And so our big challenge is helping people realize what are the forces, the worldwide forces, which are affecting their health and well-being today. Can we find our way back to that? Do we have the memory? And do we think that somehow we have in this dismal picture what's happening to the poor in the world to resuscitate our faith that we can still make a damn difference in this miserable world of ours? The promise of Alma Atta wasn't just a rallying call, but a whole philosophy of healthcare for everybody, by everybody. 1978, 150 countries or whatever it was got together and said that we need to develop a model of primary health care which delivers generalist services locally, which uses appropriate technology, appropriate labour force um, uh, models, but very importantly which involves local communities in thinking about the problems they're facing. You know very well the Almata Declaration 1978, that is health for all by 2000. But what is the position now? Not only health is not available to all the people, but the morbidity rate and ill health is increased day by day. At Calcutta's main railway station, over 2,000 people arrived from all over India for the National Health Assembly. Health workers, activists and campaigners from across the world have spent two years building up to a series of national rallies to revitalize the health for all dream. Many are a new generation who've inherited the dream but know that more of the poor have no access to health care than ever before. But I also believe that health for all contains the ingredients of a genuine social revolution of our times. How are we going to give health for all? Health is not a commodity that you can go and buy over the counter. It's not something somebody can give you. Health for all can never be achieved unless the people take over. And uh, health needs to be their goal and their target. And the technological choice should be the choice of the people. <laughs> The agenda has moved on since 1978, and there's a new bogeyman, globalization. <laughs> 50,000 people turned out for India's National Health Assembly Rally in Calcutta. Delegates, local campaigners, and school children brought one part of the city to a standstill. It went on for hours and way into the night. Village people, they don't understand this globalization, but their basic needs, food, water, and also basic hygiene are essential. This, the people like. And so this kind of assembly is needed to voice these among the people. This is basically why we're taking part. <laughs> The day after the rally, but the protest goes on. Globalization, free market economies, and privatization are all claimed as enemies of primary health care. And, they say, the poor have been increasingly excluded from this new world order, especially when it comes to medicine. The disparity is growing. 
on one hand the commercial purchasable health service is available to those who are uh, the elite sections of population on the other hand the downtrodden sections uh, those who live on the human resource and the natural resource basically who are fighting the battle against the monetary capitalists and the market oriented the sections the maternal mortality rates of third world countries is one of the grossest obscenities of the present regime under which we live compared to western countries where you get such sort of a handful of maternal deaths per 100,000 live births in many countries you're getting um up to 10% of women dying in 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 childbirth uh, 1% 2% 3% whatever it is they're f- far in excess of what um of, of what we expect in the north December the 1st and the most committed of the delegates are moving on to Dakar in neighboring Bangladesh and the International People's Health Assembly for these health workers It promises to be a landmark event, a new beginning to the unfinished revolution in healthcare. But first there are the problems of luggage, which bus to take and passports. The Indian organizing committee noticed there were anxious travelers. They handed out roses. The Indian delegation, not for the first time, was hatching a plan of action. All sorts of things. So there has to be one of you getting up and saying, "These were the messages. This was the story, either at the beginning or at the end." And it has to be spontaneous because time will always be a factor. Proceeding to Dhaka, are requested to assemble at 11 o'clock. For many of the health workers, used only to working in a few villages, this was a great adventure. Many had never been out of their home state, let alone travel to another country. This is the first time I've been outside to India also. So this is exciting for you. Yeah, for the I mean it's a very exciting journey because uh, the people from all over the states of India coming together and going for Dhaka assembly health assembly aspatriya 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 a mood of celebration aspatriya 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 It's a big thing to show what we've done and the things we do in front of everybody. I'm very happy to have had this opportunity. Spirits reflected the mood of anticipation. The People's Health Assembly promised to be a watershed. So far, it had been an exciting, exhausting couple of days. The journey to Dhaka was to take 8 bouncy hours. to the world's most heavily populated and disaster prone landscape Dhaka on course to rank amongst the world's biggest cities in the next 10 years here the next day Sylvie and Joe George arrive at Ganesh Astaya Kendra Bangladesh's premier health development center in the first week in December Delegates from over 90 countries attended the People's Health Assembly. Appalled by the state of the world's health, they came to debate what should be done. The present global trading regime is unfair, and it's that unfairness is transferring resources from the south to the north, and it is killing people. That there has to be a reform of of of, of the economic regime, which is which it, this represents. However. governments particularly third world governments are held hostage by this dynamic of the financial press the money markets as in in a very immediate sense as well as in the longer term sense the discipline of the IMF until there is a a, a strong popular movement of people in the streets saying enough is enough and forcing governments to take a stronger position the pressure on governments will be such that that those reforms will not take place 
down to World Bank. I think this is a very significant assembly. I think all around the third world, uh, people who are activists in healthcare and in primary healthcare have increasingly come to realise that unless we address the social, political, economic, above all the economic determinants of health, um, they are wasting their time in delivering services. I am here because I fight for health of our people, Russian, not only Russian, but all people. We are here to speak of uh, the health situation in the Philippines so other countries will know what's going on in our country and that's all we'll, so that we'll know what's happening in their country. I'm here to, uh, because I believe that the right to health is an essential component of life. Although we appear to be on the brink of disaster in many ways with global crises in health and environment and economics and certainly a moral crisis in the world today, and nonetheless, I think there is a kind of an awakening process starting. The People's Health Assembly here is certainly an important contribution, a step forward to that process in, in terms of building an international coalition which bridges sectors and I hope to some extent bridges even socioeconomic class. I think we are here because some of us, all of you I think, we are deeply, deeply disturbed what is happening to us in the contemporary world with a num number of forces we hardly understand let alone control, and that seemed to make that moral arc not bent towards justice, but bent increasingly towards injustice. So I thought that this is a one major event that I have to attend, I have to know what things are going around us and what are the major changes which is happening all over the world. The assembly is formally opened by Zafrullah Chowdhury, Bangladesh's pioneer of health for all and a lifelong campaigner for primary health care. Day one, and like those to follow, a performance with a message. This mine from the Philippine delegation lampoons the multinational companies that wean overworked mothers off breastfeeding and onto synthetic baby milk. As the People's Health Assembly, much was made of local health stories told by the people themselves. <laughs> In half an hour, I delivered a baby boy. I put him on my legs and washed him, and people from here, they came and said, how can she come into your house? How can an outcast wash the newborn baby? How can that happen? So I said, if I cut my hand and you cut yours, isn't it the same color? If you look at your blood and my blood, isn't it the same color? So how can you be so surprised that I have come into the house? But there were no caste divisions at the assembly. Hi, my name is Johnny. I have a wife, three kids. Every night the delegates let their hair down, leaving the political agenda for the next day. government spends more on health per capita than Cuba. The point didn't go unnoticed. Under code Z59.5, the World Health Organization classifies extreme poverty as a disease. Even in the first world, poverty leads to despair among the unemployed of Glasgow, for example. Or 25% of young men kill themselves by committing suicide. And hopefully, through the health of all assembly, we can reduce that number. Thank you. 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 Thank
and the voice is good higher. Give us jobs. For some, the emotion was too much. It still has been kept at a level that people's emotions and the articulations of their fears have come out in a, what I would say, remarkably sincere way. A lot of us are doctors and a lot of us are, are other types of professionals who have the potential of, of go, coming into positions of power and there's, there's a danger of being co-opted by that power. I think the only way to protect against that is to conscientiously, daily, think about being humble and being, uh, and your role in the scheme of things. On day three, Richard Lee Skolnick from the World Bank arrived. It's what everybody had been waiting for, but nobody seemed very keen on meeting him. More important, how to deal publicly with the world's biggest donor. I think there's an absolute place for very loud and forceful protests, like the, the uh, WTO protest in Seattle, the Washington protest against the World Bank. The Indian delegation was rounding up the troops. There is a meeting here. Yeah, but there. The World Bank provides four times as much aid for health care as the World Health Organization. Selvi, come on. <laughs> but, its critics claim, $2 billion a year of this benefits the rich West, rather than meeting the primary health care needs of the poor in developing countries. So the delegates met again to decide how to protest. They may not wear white coats, but these are professional health workers, not radical activists. They decide to present their case reasonably, rather than boycotting the World Bank's presence. But what happened was a bit different. Even though Sylvie had never been out of her village before, she wasn't shy. She grabbed the chance to make sure the World Bank was getting the right message. I believe the People's Health Assembly must help empower communities and people to improve water and sanitation, nutrition, which is so often forgotten, <laughs> hygiene, which isn't anywhere on the agenda, and health-seeking behaviors. The People's Health Assembly must be a watchdog for the quality of health outcomes. Focusing on quality can serve as a basis for much that you want to do. The People's Health Assembly must be a watchdog for ensuring that health outcomes are measured and evaluated. I hope the People's Health Assembly will be a watchdog to see that the benefits of investment in health really go to the poor. I hope the People's Health Assembly will move extraordinarily forcefully on HIV, which many countries have neglected very much to their detriment. I hope the People's Health Assembly will join global initiatives and see that they best serve the poor. Finally, I hope the People's Health Assembly will lobby governments to stop wasteful expenditure on war, on subsidies to the better off, and on corruption. The People's Health Assembly should lobby governments instead to use the money to invest in the health education, and environment of the poor. Thank you very much. I look forward to being a part of your movement and being an active Thank you.
the action plan on that. But my appeal is that, can we be honest in our heart and soul and in our speech? Bangladesh being one of the biggest collaborators, I mean the NGOs and civil society of all World Bank projects in this country. Now, if we express solidarity in this sort of forum and we say down with World Bank, and then we become the biggest collaborators of all their projects, I think that's not fair. Despite a moderating voice, there was little meeting of minds. I wonder if no medicine is better than bad medicine. The World Bank now prioritizes health care and education in development aid. But that wasn't the perception at the People's Health Assembly. Many delegates still believe World Bank aid means scrapping national health schemes, a price too high to pay. The whole system was under attack. The current global trading regime embeds many factors which discriminate against poor countries. In agriculture, in commodities, in manufacturing, in access to technology, in access to capital, and in labour, there are a range of factors which discriminate against poor countries. Next. You actually find that capital is created out of people's health, that actually destroying people's health creates wealth. Um, and so the, 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 there is a dark side to the relationship between the economy and health. The World Bank, we have to organise people against the World Bank. I'm inspired because it makes me realise how much it affects people. What really should be happening is that government should be providing basic needs, uh, providing for the basic needs of the community, um, including health, including uh, clean water and a place to live and food. Throughout the week-long assembly, workshop delegates debated the issues. But if there is an international uh, call by all the people and by all the governments that health is a right, every country we love to present it. Their ultimate goal was to finalize a charter, a manifesto to take the battle for better health care forward. To hear your opinions on the point should be addressed to, to make sure that we are of the same wavelength. When we say globalization... The process gave everyone an opportunity to contribute. global system. They wanted a lasting legacy, their chance to change the world health agenda. The reference to HIV AIDS, I think Every afternoon, they argued over the text of the Charter, word by word, line by line. With time running out, the conveners took over. They deliberated long into the night. But that's why it doesn't have the phrase domestic violence. And work on that. Then what is really important is Meanwhile, and also for most of the night, the conference hall had a Latin American feel. At 3.30 in the morning, the charter reached the printers. On day five, the final day, it arrived just in time. The charter was presented for endorsement. The attainment of the highest possible level of health and well-being is a fundamental human right regardless of a person's colour, ethnic background, religion, gender, age, abilities, sexual orientation or class. The principles of universal comprehensive primary health care envisioned in the 1978 Alma Ala Declaration should be the basis for formulating policies related to health. I feel hope. 
I don't feel fulfilled. I think it's the beginning and that we have a big challenge ahead. We should have a document to show the people. Now we have to do something and I think we have the tools. Charter means it's our dream, our aspiration. Are we now, contrary to what happened after al are we going to take our challenge more seriously? We need a popular revolution on a worldwide basis to oppose the elite powers that are endangering not only the health of much of humanity, but the very future existence of humanity. I'm <laughs> sorry.